Word problems involving subtraction are often introduced using the phrase take away over and over and over again. But did you know that takeaway problems are only one type of subtraction? In this video, I'm going to teach you the three different kinds of word problems involving subtraction and how you can teach your child to spot the difference between them so that they're able to implement appropriate strategies to solve them. Before we get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. There are three common types of subtraction word problems your child will be exposed to. The first is takeaway. The second is part whole. And the third is comparison. Let's take a look at each of these. Takeaway problems are the most basic subtraction problems your child will be introduced to first. In word problems like this, you'll likely hear about frogs hopping away, cookies being eaten, basketballs being taken, and other scenarios where objects are obviously being taken away. Here's an example problem. Molly had four cookies. She ate two. How many cookies does Molly have left? Part whole problems can be identified when you know the total or the whole, you know one part, and you only need to figure out the missing part. Here's an example of what I mean. Molly has four cookies. Two cookies are chocolate chip and the rest are sugar. How many cookies are sugar? In this example, we have the whole, Molly's four cookies, and we know one part. Two of the cookies are chocolate chip. What we need to do does not involve removing any cookies, like in the first example, but we need to find the unknown part. How many sugar cookies does Molly have? In both examples, we know as adults that we can use the equation four minus two equals two. But being able to solve these two problems might require different strategies for your child. We'll talk more about this later. The third type of subtraction word problem is a comparison problem. This is the most advanced of the three types of word problems because it requires children to determine how much greater one group is than another. For example, Molly has four cookies. Jimmy has two cookies. How many more cookies does Molly have than Jimmy? Again, as adults, we know we can solve this simply by solving four minus two equals two, but children will not see it this way unless we teach them how to identify this type of problem and how they can go about solving it. I think the most common errors we make as adults is assuming that drawing pictures and crossing them off or setting out a group of objects and removing them will make subtraction word problems make sense to our children. If the type of subtraction problem is not a takeaway problem, this method is not going to be super helpful to your child or to your students. They have to identify the difference between the types of subtraction problems so they can choose the best strategy to solve them. The first way you can support your child or your students in choosing appropriate strategies is to identify the key vocabulary words they will see as clues for whether it is a takeaway, part whole, or comparison problem. For example, Takeaway phrases to watch out for might be, how many are left, how many are there now, how many are still there, or how many are left over. A sample part whole phrase might be, how many are blank. So in our example, how many are sugar cookies? A sample comparison phrase might be, how many more, or how many fewer. The second strategy I have is to use manipulatives to act out the problem. If this is a takeaway problem, set out the objects and physically remove the appropriate quantity so your child can see what's left. If it's a part whole, set up the whole and put a divider after the known part so your child can see the unknown part on the other side and be able to physically count it. If it's a comparison problem, set up the objects in two lines that are on top of each other. To show how many more one group has than another, you can circle the extra objects or use a divider to show the extra objects on the other side of the divider. The third strategy I have is to draw pictures that accurately represent what the problem is saying is happening. Don't just draw circles and cross them off because your adult mind knows that's what you could do. If it's a part whole problem, for example, draw out the full quantity, the whole, with simple uncolored circles. Identify the part you know and color in that number of circles. The remaining circles in the group will be the answer to the word problem. 
Another strategy I have for you involving regular subtraction problems, so those that are written out and are not word problems, is not to change the name of the minus symbol to take away when you're reading problems out loud. So when you see a problem like this, don't say nine take away three, say nine minus three, so that your child gets into the habit of recognizing that there is more than one way to solve a subtraction problem. They shouldn't all be thought of as takeaway problems. And finally, I think it's appropriate to use number bonds or other addition strategies to solve part whole subtraction problems. A number bond diagram that we've talked about in previous videos can help children recognize the relationship between addition and subtraction, which might make it easier for them to solve. Identifying the relationship between addition and subtraction and how numbers are composed and decomposed will really help strengthen your child's strategies for solving mental subtraction and addition problems. So that is it for subtraction word problems and the three different types that your child will likely be exposed to when they are working on homework or worksheets in the classroom. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and share it with a friend who might find it helpful, useful, or interesting. You can always find me on social media at Walk Away From The Workbook on Facebook and Instagram, or you can email me directly with questions, comments, concerns at Walk away from the workbook at gmail.com. If you're looking for a more individualized learning plan or more individualized learning resources for your child, then head to my website listed above and see what types of resources I can create for you. Until next time, have fun learning with your little ones. Bye.